So here we're going to look at how to draw in 3D and you can see that I'm drawing just now on top of an isometric grid which is really useful to be able to keep my lines parallel to each other when I'm learning how to do isometric. When you sketch an isometric you've got to draw three faces to each of the shapes that you're drawing and we're going to start off with just drawing simple boxes of different proportions. You can start by drawing the top two lines that are parallel to each other and then fill it into a sort of diamond shape. And then you can fill down as you can see I'm just doing here to get the two uh, front faces. When I'm shading, I'm just doing a series of simple lines. And in this example here, rather than lines, I'm going to do some little dots just to create on one surface an idea of shading. So practice as many boxes as you can and once you've got used to that then we're going to try um, a curve. So you can see I've drawn part of a side and I've just drawn a curve between them and all you've got to remember is keep that back line parallel to the front line. Whatever curve you have on the front, make the same on the back edge as well and follow it. Um, we're also going to look at doing um, some different types of shapes that could represent woodwork joints. So this one that I'm doing here is a tenon and as I've drawn this one out I'm carefully figuring out where the slot would be for a through mortise that would match this tenon joint and it really helps especially when you shape bits in that show you what surfaces are what. So practically copy through the, which, as much as you can of this video, um, create some different types of joints and see how you get on. In this example here, I'm going to draw a circle. Look carefully how I sketch this circle. When I'm drawing a circle on the top face, I draw an ellipse as if it's lying on its side. Here I do the same thing again, just draw an ellipse and you'll be able to get quite a good circle effect. With this example here, if you're drawing a cylinder lying on its side, like this little, this could be a double, for example, you've got to draw the ellipse at an angle. And you can see how I've done the matching hole to line up with the double. In this example here, I'm doing a wavy line, and as long as you match the back edge to the front edge with the same squiggle, you'll get quite a good effect. And you'll notice that the lines that I'm doing here, I just kind of try and pick out where the shadows might be at the bottom of each of the dips. This is probably the trickiest one that I draw, where I'm going to draw a dovetail joint. And the reason that it's the trickiest is that I've come off of the grid, and i um, creating this angled shape of the dovetail. As much as possible, I follow that grid shape unless I need to come off to draw a diagonal line.
And lastly here I'm going to just draw a couple of um, things that we've made in the workshop as a class. This here is the shape of the mirror frame that we drew and you can see how I've drawn, drawn different parts um, assembled together. And this one here is just a very simple box that we've made. And you can see when I go around the edges, again I've come off the grid to demonstrate this sort of inside part of the box and to show that the edges have some sort of thickness to them. Do as much as you can and good luck.